What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ricky Analog, here for another episode of How to D -D 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 Dig. Let's get into it, guys. Today's episode is on pipes and not the type that crackheads like. This is for companies, guys, raising finances. So, as always, let's do the formalities first. This is only for informational and educational purposes, guys. I am not a licensed financial advisor. Investing and trading is risky, so make sure you understand those risks. Familiarize yourself with this in the description of the YouTube video. So, let's get into it, guys. What is a pipe? A pipe is a private investment in a public equity. It just means that they're selling shares that are unregistered. So, if you are unfamiliar with what a shelf is, please go watch the one I just released on what a shelf is and how it pertains to registered securities. This is the opposite. This is when the securities being sold are not registered. Therefore, they cannot be sold on the open market. So when, when you hear of a private placement or a pipe being done and you see that knee-jerk reaction in price, uh, where a lot of people tend to think, wow, look, the dilution is happening. No, that's not what's happening. These shares are not hitting the open market. You are not being dumped on. It's just people that know what will be coming in the future. They know that a pipe can be dilutive eventually. And so people tend to overreact. So first, I wanna just clear up the air on that word dilution, okay? A lot of people, I think, just throw that word around and so technically dilution all it is is when the os grows and you know there's more uh there's more let's just use the pizza analogy right everybody's got a slice of pizza well now there's more slices and so your slice basically just got smaller same same pizza and now you just have a little less that's the concept behind dilution but it's not the same thing as when a stock price gets jammed up and runs into overhead supply and retail investors get dumped on okay the dilution happened when the OS grew but that didn't affect retail investors what affects retail investors is when they get dumped on by the people that hold the overhead supply so just just know that when you're throwing that word dilution around especially when you see an s3 get registered and you're just like running around screaming dilution, dilution, dilution. It's not dilution, guys. It's just the registering of shares that will eventually probably get dumped on retail. Yes, but it's not happening immediately. These are things that happen down the line. But it's important to see them coming so that you can be prepared for it. So as far as pipes go, they are unregistered. Usually if the company doesn't get them registered within a certain amount of time, the, the legends on them, that the restrictive legends will come off after about six months, um, as long as other uh, criteria is also met. However, usually the terms of the private placement state that there will be a best effort on the company's part to get, a to get the shares registered so that they can be resold. So a lot of times you'll see an S3 and you will see uh, that it is registering. Let's just see if this one is. I think this is one, guys. Where? Bop, bop, yep. So this is it. The prospect. The blah blah blah. The prospectus relates to the resale by selling stockholders. That's the key term right there, guys. That's how you know it's not a primary offering. These are shares that were sold in a private placement, and they are now being registered by the company, so that the people that bought them in the private placement can sell them. Now, oftentimes. Uh, even though it's registered and gets the notice of effectiveness, there's still uh, sometimes a restriction in the in the contract stating when those shares can be sold. A lot of times, uh, private placements are done concurrently with a public offering. So they'll sell maybe a million shares in a public offering and they'll say, in a concurrent private placement, we're also selling the same amount of warrants. And the warrants will be uh, exercisable in six months from the date of issuance you know you'll see that they're issuable or they're uh, <clears throat> they'll be registered within six months but then you go and look at their filings and you'll see oh they registered it two months later and they got the notice of effectiveness doesn't matter 
as long as those warrants are not exercisable within until six months, even though they're registered, doesn't mean that they can just turn around and, and dump them on you guys. So it's important to familiarize yourself with all the, uh, the, the terms in the contracts because they lay everything out for you. I know it's a pain in the butt to do all that reading, but I mean, that's what filings are, okay? So the reason I'm using CAPR, Capricorn, this is one of my old time favorites, turds. Uh, they did do a private placement and it was back in, it was in May of 2017. So let's take a look at the chart because I think the chart always tells a story to go along with the filings, guys. So we're talking about back here and like, let's just cut out all that other stuff. We're looking in this area, five, I believe it was done on five, eight. Um, so yeah, right in here they did this private placement and you see the, the price fell off a cliff um, from bad data that happened right afterwards. So let's go back to the filing real quick. Oops, sorry. And so here is the 8K that discloses the private placement. So it is a, a material um, development within the company. So they are required to file an 8K on these guys. So you will see these. And you'll see right here, it was 1.2 million shares at $3.10 a share. So the company was able to raise $4 million, which is why they do these. And that's another important thing to note. Why does a company do a pipe? Well, they're quicker, easier, there's less regulation on them. And oftentimes, especially with these turds, you'll notice that maybe they've done offerings recently and they are at their limit of what they can raise from an S3 in 12 months and an S1 takes longer to become effective and is a lot more of a painstaking uh, thing to file so it's easier to do a pipe and it's quicker and they just can tap the capital markets in the blink of an eye and then they'll deal with it later down the road so they sell these 1.2 million shares for three dollars and ten cents a share and then you have this happen now, a lot of people probably think, wow, those guys got bagged, right? All the people that bought the pipe. Well, put your tinfoil hats on, guys, and try to think real hard outside the box. What could somebody do that buys shares at $3.10 do to make sure that if this happens, which is almost a guaranteed thing if uh, you know what's happening behind the scenes, what can they do to make sure that they are not getting crushed in this? There are things that can be done. I'm not going to expand on it much more. I just want to make sure that if you are the type that wants to wear a tinfoil hat and ma get made fun of, then by all means, this is the spot to do it, okay? So let's go back to the filings. And we are going to see here, what is that, two months? It's about two months later, they register those shares. This is the one we were just looking at. And it was the res for the resale that the shares bought in the pipe. And you'll see they, it's just like a normal S3, guys. And remember, I just did all this stuff in the, the shelf webisode. Um, all the stuff that's included in here, right? How they're going to use the proceeds, uh, risk factors. Always check out this thing here, the offering. You're going to see what's o the OS and stuff that's not included in there. And uh, yeah, so let's go back to the chart. So that happened, this uh, filing was 7.6. So they registered them here. So they're registering shares that were bought at $3.10 when the thing is trading below a dollar. And then you get this pop, and I, I, I explicitly remember trading this back, back in this time. And I remember what everybody was thinking and saying, and you know, oh look, it's into the gap and fading it. And I think, just let me explain something to you just from a this is not from a fundamental sec filings perspective this is just from a technical analysis perspective when you get the a price that fills that goes into a gap like this this is no man's land for shorting i know that there was people shorting here and they they did very well i'm sure but that is risky business and if you know anything about technical analysis, it's that these gaps tend to fill. Price loves to go and try to fill a gap. And if you look at historical gaps, by and large, the, the vast majority of them get filled. So 
Anybody was shorting this up here? Maybe I can see shorting here if price confirmed, like intraday price action confirmed. But every day it, it popped, it was breaking this level. And it was just like, dude, what are you guys doing playing with fire like that? And it worked out fine, right? And guess what happens when you do something like that and it works out? Especially however many, look at one, two, three times I see wicks above that level and it sold off. So three times people played with fire like that and it worked out. Well, you're ingraining bad habits. I'm sorry that I'm going off on a technical analysis tangent, but guys. So then what happens is, look, we get this pop and I'm sure everybody that made money in this and this and this did it again. And look what happened. Boom. We get this giant move that more than fills the gap. And uh, I went and looked just to see if there was some sort of news back then. And what it was was on uh, September 18th. All it was was a PR stating that they were going to present. Um, <clears throat> I think it was like follow-up data to a phase two or something from the HOPE trials. And it was slated to be, it was a forward-looking statement saying that they will be presenting that on October, I think, 4th. Was it 4th or 5th? Um, I think I still have it over here. Here's the uh, thing, right? Here. October fourth. So they wrote this came out. Well, the conference started on the third. They're going to present on the fourth, and this was released on September eighteenth. Okay, so <laughs> that's the news. You got to be kidding me. That's the the PR that caused this. No, you know what happened? There was a bunch of people that shorted where they shouldn't be shorting, especially when we broke these levels here. And um, on top of that, if you were able to kind of figure out what your tinfoil hat, how these people were that bought at 310 were able to hedge, then you can also kind of put together a thesis on where some of this buying pressure came from down here. Because that's a lot of volume, guys. And that's a big move. So... Hopefully your tinfoil hat game is strong. And uh, so yeah, now when we get this push up into this four area, you better believe that all those people that bought that pipe at 310 were selling into this. And it's no surprise at all to me that this is where that move stalled out. You know, because now you're getting those people that are well in the money on that private placement. And they're just, you know, they, they unloaded. And obviously, it was a sell the news event. You know, October 4th. Let's see, what day was this? October 4th was the day that it was just to hammer that thing. And uh, yeah, anybody that bought into the news is now a bag holder. <laughs> and all the people that are smart enough to know that it was a sell the news, they made bank as long as you were patient enough to wait for it, guys. Um, and this is where the, the SEC filings help. It helps you to know where not to short. Technical analysis says don't short in here. And uh, the fundamentals, the SEC finally say don't short below 310 because that's where the pipe holders are. And uh, looks like the pipe, the guys in the pipe actually took a lead pipe and beat longs over the head up here in the fours. So let's move on to another example. Um, this one, so CAPR, Caper, Capricor, is a something that happened in the past. And it's a, it's an it's an op opportunity to look back and see how it played out, right? So the next one we're going to look at is ACHV, which is not happening in the... It's not something that happened in the past. This is something that's happening now. It's a, uh, a current private placement I just found. You know, I, I go and look for a few examples when I put these together just so I don't have to uh, have too much dead air. So this was... Let's see... October 1st guys this is very very recent and like I said guys sometimes you'll see these where they do a registered direct offering and that's in that's what they did here they did an offering and they did a concurrent private placement for warrants so let's go and look at here's the the prospectus supplement so they sold 1.8 million shares and where is it somewhere in here yep 900,000 shares of uh, or 900,000 warrants. I think they're priced at the same. I think it's 315 and you'll see the warrants are not being registered because they're, it's a pipe guys. It's a private placement. 
and da, 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 da. and obviously they haven't they they haven't been registered yet and take a look at the chart a well-known turd <laughs> guys every time this thing pops there's an offering and you know when this thing popped here uh, just last this uh, last month um, let me go and see yeah I, I'm almost positive but let's look at the filings that go with this check this out in in this uh, perspective supplement notice what they are using um, da, 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 where is it so they're able to now raise 5.6 million dollars but why are they able to raise that much well because of their MVPHS directly after um, this move they're using this closing price here of three what is it 381 so at 381 uh, multiplied by their um, MVP or not their MV, their float they now are able to offer an aggregate of 5.6 million dollars which is what they're doing and let's see let's go and read a little more Usually, yep, right here. Here you'll see the warrants. <clears throat> you can always, like I always say, guys, use um, Control F as your buddy in here. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 da. I want to see. I'm just looking real quick to see if um, they say when the warrants will be exercisable. So they're immediately exercisable, but they're not registered, okay? So the reason I'm pointing this one out is just know that at 314, these guys have overhead, okay? So this is one of those ones for future reference. So make a note that if in the near term future we see some fluff PR from ACHV, I mean, it's pretty well known that anytime you see a fluff PR from ACHV that it's, it's a golden short, but now you know that there's overhead supply at 314. It's not a whole lot, it's like a, almost a million shares, but next time you guys see this price pop up like this, just know that these guys, if these, so what the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go and see, have they registered them? And you know what? You probably won't see a fluff PR until they do. So watch for an S3 to pop up where they register those, those warrants or an S1, you know, in fact, <clears throat> they just sold the max amount that they were able to raise. So they were able to raise $5.6 million. They did. Now it grew the OS by 1.8 million, but the price is way down now. So they're, they are not going to be able to use an S3. Let's see how much this uh, S3 was for that they pulled this off of. So it was filed. Oh God! Here's another thing to point out, guys. This S3 was just about to expire. It, they're good for three years, and look. So they used some here in uh, September of 2017, and then they waited 12 months so that they could offer again. Because every 12 months, you know, whatever you previously offered is no longer affecting what the S3 was. So they were just about to run out of time to offer on this. So that's another little nugget, guys. Pay attention for when a, a shelf is expiring. It is possible to re-register a shelf. It costs money, and sometimes these companies don't have money, so sometimes they'd rather just throw a fluff PR out there and use it, okay? But um, let's just check and see what the amount was on the shelf. It was for 100 million. <laughs> it's You guys are gonna laugh at this, watch this. So they had a $100 million shelf lofty goals eh so they just did 5.6 million on that last one and the previous one was for 10 million so they had 100 million shelf guys and they raised like 16 million from it way to go ACHV you guys get the turd of the year award all right guys so that is a pipe in uh I just wanted to kind of touch on it and let you guys understand the difference between a pipe because it's unregistered shares 
and a, and a public offering which are registered shares okay and how these pipes um, don't necessarily affect you right away but they're good to know because you want to know the price the people paid and you also want to know um, you also want to know when they when they become uh, registered now I guess there's one more thing I can point out and that is uh, let's see NXTD has I know they had one let's just check real quick Okay, this was the reason I wanted to point that one out was it was one where it's like, look, it tells you six months out that uh, that they will be able to exercise those warrants that were done in a pipe, and um, you can see. So that was here in November 2017, and they registered them in January of 2018. Now, just because they got registered does not mean they can sell them. Okay, that's what I wanted to point out, and we can also go and look and see. When they got the notice of effectiveness so they were in effect in february but they could not sell those until um what is six months after november may i think it's may <laughs> like i said guys i'm terrible at that but um there was another example which was uh it's also important to know who is it that holds the 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 private shares the unregistered shares because not everybody has the same motive so if it's like if it's some dirt balls behind the scene that are known characters in the charade then you can probably bet that price will eventually get pushed back up there and they will make sure that they're going to get out in the green and they're doing other shady stuff behind the scenes to make sure they're not getting bagged but Let's look at EYES, Eyes, Second Sight Medical, and you'll see they constantly get these really big private placements. But every time it's from this guy, Greg Williams. He's the chairman of the board. This guy's like a, I think he's worth like over 50 million bucks. Uh, and he's constantly dumping, look at $5 million. Let's go look at his form fours. The guy owns 33 million shares of EYES. And I'm sure people always, talk about how oh this guy's gonna dump he's gonna be a, he's gonna be dumping no dude look if you go back and look at his history he's just been non-stop funding the company and slowly he is the largest holder of the company and uh even though they're a turd i mean in, in terms of you know shadiness these guys aren't super shady like some of the other things we deal with they're a biotech guys and honestly the the concept behind the company is pretty cool you know they're trying to make it so that people that can't see can see and that's awesome and if this guy is the, on the chair is on the board and he's dumping millions and millions of his own money into it that's for me a, a sign that like yo even if it's a turd i'll trade it on an intraday basis or whatever but i'm not like betting against this company i just know that if price gets extended it's going to present an opportunity for me to possibly play a mean reversion on it and short it and make a make a penny or so off it whatever but i'm not going to go into the trade thinking that this guy is going to dump all his shares on shareholders um because i've, I've researched it and see like his history he hasn't been dumping he's been nothing but acquiring and when somebody would uh that that acquires that big of a position on a company that has a chart like UIES. Let's see if uh, let me pull the chart up for you guys. I mean, well, it used to be much turdier. You can see this price action here in the past versus what what has happened in the near near term. We've just been coiling, but um, that guy he probably knows a lot more about the company and their prospects than us. And he's not dumping. So that's one of the key takeaways from this guy should be to always, not just in private placements, but in any offering, especially like, you know, you see the, the people that scream ECYT is a, is a turd and all oh, look at it's trading above the offering price. This is going to be a sure thing short. And like, look how ECYT worked out for people. Um, look how 
TN, TNDM worked out for people. Look how um, XNet worked out for people. I mean, things can be as short eventually, but you know, know know who it is that's uh, that's holding those those unregistered shares or registered. If it's a offering and it's bought up by a bunch of funds or institutions that aren't dumping, that have already got positions and they haven't got a history of dumping, um, and the pricing is strong, maybe that's a sign that it's not a short just based off the fact they did an offering. Let's also acknowledge that companies like biotechs need to do offerings because they gotta fund the company. So not all offerings are bad. Yes, all offerings are dilu dilutive, but dilution in itself is not necessarily a negative thing for the future of the company. So you have to separate out. You have to know, you have to have a clear way of separating out whether a company is a turd or if they are actually something that might not be um, the easiest low hanging fruit short. Okay. So hopefully that's helped you guys. Um, I'm actually. That's all the episodes of how to dig that I had planned out from the last Twitter crowdsourcing of ideas. Um, we knocked all four of those out plus some. So I'm actually going to probably put another poll up and see what you guys would like to see next. Um, I'm assuming we'll probably get into some of the convertible debts, uh, convertible preferred shares, things of that nature. Hopefully you guys are loving these and learning from them. If so, please hit that like, subscribe share this everywhere put it on twitter retweet and make sure you turn on notifications guys so you know when the next episodes come out um and spread the word and i'll i'll try to keep putting them out guys all right peace